Did you watch Game of Thrones, Camille? Do you spend a lot of time moseying in Red Dead Redemption 2? What's that? Oh, it's like a more violent version of Madonna's Don't Tell Me video. I love that song. Oh my God, so at first it's like, hey girl, hey, checking in, everyone's dead. As a matter of fact, Christina Aguilera is so shaken up after Sir Kylo's death, she's got to give him some final parting words. I'm so sorry to not even get to sit on it once. It's okay, I'm dead. Now I don't want anyone to sit on it. It was the saddest marshmallow roast I've ever seen, and I've been camping with Viola Davis. So then at the funeral after party, Christina Aguilera shows what a woke boss she is when she gives Gendry Fluid a promotion. You are Lord Gendry Baratheon of Storm's End, the lawful son of Robert Baratheon, because that is what I have made you. <laughs> But it completely backfires because everyone is flipping their shit for the assistant regional manager, Jon Snow. They're wanting selfies, honey. They want to get on that story, honey. Everyone just wants the little peas. What kind of person climbs on a fucking dragon? A madman or a king? Let me get this straight. Everyone wants time with Jon Snow for crashing a dragon. Meanwhile, Christina has been riding a dragon backwards and in heels for years, and she's just sitting in the corner. Nobody wants to talk to her. So then meanwhile, it's closing time over there at Club Stark, and everyone is on the prowl for their PTSD, post-traumatic stress ducka. And then it's Fuck Watch 2019. So it seems like Mr. Grace Cuttington is finally gonna get to lay the pipe, seal the deal, put it in, plug it in, make it right with little baby Tilda Swinton, when all of a sudden. <laughs> Fuck Watch 2019. Remix. It's bloody hot in here. But then Jamie's like really nervous because he hasn't done it with anyone who's like not related to him in a long time. What are you doing? It wasn't even that he couldn't get her bra off, he couldn't even get his bra off. It's like kissing, fumbling, silence, fumbling, but it really doesn't matter because they end up making magical, sweet love and Tilda gets her V-card punched with Brother D's golden fist. And you're thinking, finally, something nice happened to someone. Wrong, wrong. This show is like trusting your parents to buy you the right SNES game for Christmas. Do you ever play Doom? Do you remember how scary that was? Yes, there is an, yes, I do play Doom. But also that 007 game was also really good. GoldenEye. Yes. What's the guy, he's a hedgehog, he runs fast? Sonic. Correct. The Sims. Okay. Um, it's like a space game with space super soldiers. They have armor all over their body. They have guns. Apollo 13. Uh, that's a Tom Hanks movie. Uh, well, what about the game where there's like ducks and you have to hunt them? Oh, oh, duck hunt. Uh, what about the game where blocks are falling and if they become friends, they disappear? Oh my God, Tetris. Also, there's a game with soldiers killing each other. What's that game? That's life, girl. I'm so upset, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm so sick of it, you know what I'm saying? Tilda is completely digmatized. Stay with me. Please. You think I'm a good man? <laughs> you picked the fuck boy instead of the good boy. Oh my God, I can't count the number of times I've had sex with someone and then they've gone to have sex with their sibling instead. I know Mr. Grace Coddington was the right choice, but he did not put his best foot forward. Now, which one of you cowards shit in my pants? For once in the show, the only people not getting it on are Jon Snow and Thea Christina Aguilera. Her number one objective at this point is to keep his mouth so full of snatch that he can't go spill the beans about the fact that he's the heir to the throne. I've never begged for anything, but I'm begging you, don't do this, please. And Jon Snow is like, don't worry, I'm only gonna tell three people, my sister who fully hates you, a cold-blooded assassin, and a time-traveling telepath. And they're not gonna tell anyone! How many others know? Eight. And then it's not a secret anymore. It's information. That was so triggering for me. When I was like eight years old, my Uncle Ralph told me that my whole family was going to San Diego for Christmas for our family vacation, but he told me that I couldn't tell anyone or we wouldn't end up going. So obviously, I had to go get all my cousins together and tell everyone that we were definitely going to the San Diego Zoo. Three months later, he was like, well, we were gonna go to San Diego, but 
Jonathan told everyone, so now we have to go to the St. Louis Zoo instead. That's so cruel. I know. Then later, Gendry Fluid proposes to baby kill Bill at the halftime of the Clippers game. It does not go well. You'd be a wonderful lord, and any lady would be lucky to have you. But I'm not a lady. And then it's brother time over at Gordon Beerish when Mayor Pete and Brother D are catching up having a little reunion when they are rudely interrupted by used car salesmen slinging slurs. All your cocksucking grandsons can ruin the family with their cocksucking ways. Ew, homophobic much? I might suck all the D over the age 29 I can get my hands on, but that does not make me a cocksucker. That makes me someone with good taste, that makes me busy, and that also makes me a damn queen. So then everyone's saying their sad goodbyes to Jon Snow at winter camp when we find out he's actually a living, breathing EPT test. Two things I'll tell you right now. You never ask a woman if she's pregnant and you never tell a woman she should cut bangs. So then later, while they're doing some fancy footwork, making their way to dethrone evil no volume Carol Brady, we discover Christina Aguilera did not heed Sansa Fierce's advice to ground her Supermax 737 dragons. Jonathan, did you see that scene of Major Pete dodging CGI arrows on the boat and think, am I watching Game of Thrones or am I playing Shenmue? Beach had swept away. Baby Barack is in a desperate search for Solange, but he cannot find her, and that's because she's hostage de jour at Evil No Volume Carol Brady's condo. But don't worry, it's just all a part of the festive atmosphere because Evil No Volume Carol Brady and Jared Let Himself Go are gearing up for their monster reveal party. The lion shall rule the land, the kraken shall rule the sea, and our child shall one day rule them all. I don't know if she's actually pregnant or just using it as a ploy. Jon Snow should hug her, it's the only way to know. I mean, what kind of HMO do they have where he is the only snow BGYN in town? He's temperate and measured. And then Christina and co are serving Evil No Volume Carol Brady an eviction notice. But Evil No Volume Carol Brady's like, bitch, this is a rent control building and over my dead body you're taking me anywhere besides. Baby Tom Tom added me to the lease last fall. And Mayor Pete tries to make nice. I beg you. But Evil No Volume Carol Brady goes, no dice. She's like, don't you dare use my maternal instincts against me. I am just as vindictive and unreasonable as any man. Why? If George R.R. R. Martin was writing on this season, for sure everyone would die and the last scene would be ghosts standing on a pile of carcasses going, will someone pet me? Wow, 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 you are serving me some short hair Jon Snow realness. Thank you. Where are my dragons? Look at how cute you look. Oh my God. Uh, could you be any cute? Look, uh, turn. Oh my God. 